Hi, this is Ladylex UK and this is a Dreams tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make a microchip that will power things on and off. And as an example, I have made a door and a lever box. So let's see what I've built here. Um, here is my possessed mannequin. If I walk over to the lever box, a little triangle appears. And if I press triangle, the lever moves and a light comes on. If I press it again, the lever moves back and the light goes off. So I can do that. There's our lever. And here we have a door. And if I get to the door, um, above the doorknob, a little triangle appears. And the door opens. And I can press triangle again. And the door will shut. And from this side, and get for the door. I can open the door like so. Okay, let's have a look at that and see how easy or difficult that is to do. Right then, let's just close this microchip down. Um, let's rewind. Let's have a look at the lever box to start with. So I have got a uh, a box I've just made out of a uh, stretch cube, and I've just cut a cylinder shape out of it. I've made a separate object of the lever. And I've attached it to my box with a, uh, a bolt. And I've set the bolt so that there are limits. If you're not familiar with the limits on a connector, there's a button here that you use. And you select um, these yellow limits here. This blue one represents where the object will be. And this is our limits to how far it will go. So we can get our lever to move backwards and forwards. You don't actually have to put in a bolt, but it makes it easier when you're making your keyframe to get it in the right position. If you've got a, a nice simple bolt where you can move backwards and forwards. Okie dokie. So there is my lever box and here is my microchip. So let's open that up. Let's start off uh, on the left hand side here. We have a trigger zone. I've popped the trigger zone in front of my lever box. Um, you can have it all the way around the lever box if you want, but I think it's probably best if you only have it in one position, so he has to be standing in front of it to use the lever. So that's where I've put that. And the, the trigger zone is linked to two objects. It's linked to a text displayer and an AND gate. Let's look at the text displayer first. Um, as you can see, it is showing um, a button uh, of the triangle. Now, if you're not familiar um, with the text displayer here, uh, normally you would type in just text in there. So you could type in press the triangle, but this is much better to just have the image of the button. Now, it, there is no instructions that tells you this. Um, you have to have read the forums to know this, but um, you can use um, some short codes in order to get up various icons. So you use L2 and triangle to get to this page and you use these angle brackets. There's a list of all um, suitable words. Whoops, I came out of that, I didn't mean to. Um, there was a list of all suitable words on indreams.me um, that gives you a list, but let's, um, let's just type in, so we type in circle Actually, let's type, type in cross. I haven't done that one. Cross. And then close your bracket. And there you get the cross button. It's very handy. There's lots of uh, really uh, interesting uh, icons that you can use. Just have a look at the list. Like I say, it's published on the in uh, indreams.me. And um, there's lots there to, to choose from. We don't need... We don't need that cross button because that's good. We have the triangle. Um, I've made it green to, to match the, the button and I've removed the text box and I've removed the border by pressing on these little eyes. That gets rid of it. I've also moved it into, uh, I've pressed this button. Now, by default, your buttons all appear on the screen layer. Now the screen layer, let's imagine there's a piece of glass in front of your scene. And that piece of glass is between you and the scene. And anywhere you, any time you place anything on that screen, uh, it's always going to appear between you 
and the scene. Um, and you can layer it anywhere you like around the screen and it doesn't matter what happens uh, in the level, it's always going to appear in the same position. If however you click on this button, it's going to appear within the scene somewhere in 3D space. Um, and for this example, I've popped it above the box. It's very useful. Right, okay, so uh, we got our AND gate and we've got this connected to a controller sensor. So let's have a look at the settings for that. Now, first of all, if you've got an object that is never going to be possessed and it's got a, you want to, uh, the, the controller buttons to be used, you need to set this to remote controllable. So go to this page first, set it to remote controllable before you do anything else, because if you leave it to the end, you might forget. And then you'll wonder why your object isn't working. It's because you haven't pressed this button. So remote controllable, click on that first. First thing you do. Uh, then you can connect up uh, any of the buttons you want. I've chosen the triangle button and I've linked that into our AND gate. So what our AND gate is doing is it's saying, is the player detected? And and I didn't mention it, but um, I w I've got the, uh, the default, which is possessed controller sensor. So it's a possessed puppet. If um, the... If it's detected a, a puppet, a, a possessed puppet, and you've pressed the triangle button, then it's true. If it's true, it does two things. One, it links to this special effect, which um, is a sound effect that plays uh, the sound of that lever moving. And it also goes to the selector and decides whether or not that the um, lever is on or off. So let's go into the selector. Now you can see at the beginning of the game, A is selected, so we'll make that our off um, position and we'll make B our on position. So we've chosen two, so it's on and off. The wire from the AND gate goes into our move to next output. So when we start, we're on A. When you press your triangle, it's going to move to next output, which is B, which will turn it on. If it's on and you press the next output, it will go to A, which is off. So all of the things that are connected to B will stop and it will go back to A. So that's how the selector works. Now the selector B port, which is the on port, is connected to a keyframe and a node. So let's have a look at the keyframe. Now as you can see, our lever has moved up over here. So you uh, place a keyframe, move your lever into its on position and press record, stop recording. And then you've got your keyframe. Now you can have it so it just flicks immediately backwards and forwards, but I like it to have a slow power up and a slow power down. So I've added that um, to my keyframe. And this is a node. I've called it lever on. It's connected to the uh, B port to say that the lever is on. So if this is producing, uh, this is this is true, this is going to turn things on. And it's connect. It's uh, on our microchip, and there it is. There, lever on. It's created a little uh, wire port for us, and we can now wire anything we like to this. Um, I've wired a light to, to, to this lever, but you could wire anything you like, a doorway, um, some music, um, a, a timeline with some animation, you could release a, um, an enemy or all sorts of things that you can do uh, when you've pulled that lever and that is what you wire it into. There we go, from this wire into whatever you want to power on is what you do. And there is a really simple selector for powering things on and off. Now, I've, obviously I've got to use it as a lever. Over here, I've popped it on my door. So here is my door, whoops, it's exactly the same microchip. So we've got the detect zone, the AND gate, the controller sensor, the selector, the sound, a keyframe, and our lever. Now, uh, our lever on node. In this case, it's door on, so let's change the name of that. Door open. There we 
we go. So that, that's the door opens. Because what I did is I just copy and pasted my microchip and I swapped my keyframe for the keyframe for opening this door. So it's exactly the same as the lever. And But you'll notice my text gadgets are no longer on this microchip. They're actually on the door. And that's because I wanted it attached to this doorknob. So I've just surface snapped it to the door and placed it. And obviously I'm going to need two. So I've made two. So there's two actual um, a copy two two text for for one for the back of the door and one for the front of the door. There we go. And the trigger zone is for the front and the back of the door. So we've made it a little bit longer. I haven't got that quite even, but there we go. So you have to be standing in these either of these two positions really. Uh, for the for the door mechanism to work. I haven't got it quite exactly the right size, but um, you get the gist of what you need to do there. So there we go. There is a door mechanism. It's exactly the same um, microchip as before. I just tweaked it a little for the specific specifics of this particular door. So there you go. A powering on and off mechanism. Hope that was useful. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in your dreams.